What's going on investors? It's Dust here from Investments. Today I want to bring you what I see as the top three necessary skills for success with personal finance. If you stick around to the end, I'll share my resource on how I manage one of the most important ones for myself. Uh, this is called the bucket system. Number one, top skill for success with personal finance is to know thyself. What do I mean by this? I mean, if you're bad with credit cards, don't include them in your strategy. If you've had bad experiences where you, you know, rack up debt and you're unable to pay it, stop doing that. If you can't stand to see big amounts of cash in your accounts, open multiple accounts and have direct deposits split it up before you even see it. If you know you don't have the stomach to trade and hold in hard times or you get too uneasy with profits, then don't trade. Don't include that in your strategy. It's about knowing yourself well enough to counteract your own personal flaws and shortcomings. And I don't mean flaws or shortcomings to criticize you or critique you. I mean it just so you can own those flaws for yourself. So an example not related to finances with soda. So if we have soda in the house, I'm going to drink it. I'm going to drink it when we eat pizza. I'm going to drink it with certain meals. You know, I want it. But what do I do to counteract that is I don't buy soda. So there is no soda in the house to drink. So it's about not being ashamed of your shortcomings or flaws, but just taking ownership and finding a way to negate them so they don't get in your way. You know, make it easy for yourself and know yourself well enough to make it easy. So number two is to have a strategy. So with anything in life, you need to be able to envision the path before it materializes. Having a strategy is gonna set you up with guidelines to keep you on track, you know? That's all it really needs to be. It doesn't need to be a strict path, but something that you have bearings with, you know? So with finance, there's a million different avenues you could take, you know? You could pursue tons of different routes. Uh, so set up your strategy and carry on with it. If you do real estate, do real estate. If you wanna do index fund investing, do index fund investing. Uh, just plan it out and stick to it. You know, the more you can envision it, the more likely it is to become reality. Uh, budgets would also fall under a strategy. I'm not the best at budgeting, but I do a pretty good job keeping things in check with the systems I use. Like I mentioned before with splitting up my income with direct deposit, I use the bucket method. And that's what I use to ensure that I'm saving what I want to save in each category that I want to save. So it ta it's tailored to my strategy very well. So it's one of the strategies I use that negates one of my flaws. And that is if I see a lot of cash in my account, I'm more likely to spend it. It also sets me up to have reserves for each important bill, like my mortgage or my car payment, but I'll get into that in the next step. So third, top skill and this one's very easy but it's probably the most important and people don't really adhere to it because it's not very glamorous or not sexy but the rule is save more than you earn and every financial book you read or audiobook or whatever podcast is going to tell you this one of my favorite books in the personal finance space was the richest man in babylon and they recommend saving about 10 percent of your income for yourself I like to think of saving in terms of percentages like that because it doesn't really matter how big or small of numbers you're working with when you think in terms of percentage. So I would also go as far as to say that 10% is a minimum to adhere to. It's not really as aggressive of a savings plan as I'd like personally. I also like to separate mine into buckets. So like I mentioned before, example of this is how i have my direct deposit separate my paycheck into six or seven different buckets uh the buckets i have are expenses like your average grocery bill or whatever expenses you use to pay i have a savings bucket home loan bucket a car bucket investing bucket home emergency fund bucket and a travel fund bucket now with these things, such as the home loan and the car loan, I have them set up so that I'm paying more into them than I'm taking out. In this way, I'm creating a reserve over time. And once I get to a comfortable level, I can turn this off and just put in what I'm pulling out. And that reserve will just stay there in case of emergency or what have you. 
you know, if I were to lose my job, for instance, then I'll have a couple months saved up for my home loan. In this way, I'm building up a reserve over time for each big expense individually. But speaking of reserves and emergency funds, I like to take that 10% rule from the richest man in Babylon and say that you should probably have a 10% of your annual income as a minimum emergency fund. So this helps with things like, you know, like I mentioned before, people losing their job temporarily, you know, people got to move temporarily. It's always easier when you have reserve cash. Everything is always easier. You know, you get unexpected bills, your car breaks down, you got to go to the doctor, you know, your kid's sick. It, it gets a lot easier when you have an emergency fund. So with that said, if you start using your emergency fund, your next goal is to get that emergency fund back up to the 10% of your annual income. So if you're making $50,000 a year, have a $5,000 emergency fund. This was one of the strategies I like to have and it helps with so many aspects of your life. So that's all I really got for you today. Three necessary skills for success with personal finance. I know they're a little more abstract, but these are really the necessary skills for the average person to succeed with personal finance, especially when they don't teach you any of this in the years of traditional school. I'm gonna leave my referral link below for the Capital One savings and checking accounts I use to set up the buckets. At the time of this video, there's zero fees on the checking and savings. And it also has one of the highest annual interest rates for savings account. With these checking and savings account, you can set up multiple accounts under one username and login. That way you can set up your buckets and you have individual accounts so you can set up your direct deposit to pull each specified amount into those. If not, you can have it automatically set up to do so. So that's all for today. Until next time, later.